I'm standing upon the shoulders of Booker T. Washington, who inquired of his students, have you as Tuskegee students grown to the point where you can unflinchingly stand up for the right, for that which is honorable, honest, truthful, whether it makes you popular or unpopular? Have you grown to the point where absolutely and unreservedly you make truth and honor your standard of thinking and speaking? If you have reached this point in your moral development, you have reached the highest point for which Tuskegee University was founded, for which you came here. I stand upon the shoulders of President Robert Russell Moton, who stated, quote, if you are to be true to the great and sacred trust of the Tuskegee spirit, if we are to carry out the aims and purposes of Booker T. Washington, founder of this great institution, we must cherish and maintain the spirit which has permeated the life and work of this school, the spirit of self-forgetfulness, and the spirit of cooperation and consecration. I stand upon the shoulders of President Frederick Douglass Patterson, who asserted, throughout the years of relationships with the state of Alabama, this institution has sought continuously to contribute to the welfare of the state, the South, and country through its efforts to raise the level of the masses of Negro people, whether these be in matters of education, the economy, health, or human well-being. I stand upon the shoulders of President Luther Hilton Foster. Who inquired, quote, what will we do as citizens of Tuskegee in America when our fellow human beings in other countries are starving by the millions? I wish I could be sure we would make the right and human decision. This issue is one of values and need for cultivation. And I'm standing upon the shoulders of President Benjamin Franklin Payton, who stated, it was clear to me that if Tuskegee University was going to come into its own, it must reach for the stars and seek to be the best in sculpting out new areas of instruction. This legacy is reflected in the current enviable state of the university with its 5,000 acre contiguous campus, its inventory of over 100 buildings, its endowment ranking in the top three among historically black colleges and universities. It's, it's highly dedicated trustees, distinguished and devoted alumni, its competitive student body of approximately 3,000 students, its productive staff, superlative faculty and academic programs, including PhD programs in integrated biosciences, material science and engineering, a doctor of veterinary medicine degree that has been conferred on 75% of all African American veterinarians. An architectural degree that has been conferred on 72% of all African-American architects. As well as an array of diverse centers of excellence, including those addressing advanced materials, nanomaterials, biomedical information management, biomedical research, computational epidemiology, bioinformatics and risk analysis, battlefield capability enhancement, small ruminant research programs, food and animal plant systems, food and environmental systems for human exploration and development of space, plant biotechnology, the George Washington Carver Agricultural Experiment Station, the Center for Bioethics Research and Healthcare, the Prostate Cancer Research Initiative, and the newly established Health Disparities Institute for Research and Education, directed by Dr. Roberta Troy. <laughs> Notwithstanding these significant and laudable accomplishments, in order for Tuskegee University to achieve the next level of globally recognized research preeminence, there is still much to be accomplished. We must, 
enhance our undergraduate curriculum and expand our graduate programs in the sciences, engineering, public health, agriculture, social sciences, psychology, management, and liberal arts, we must build on our strengths in veterinary medicine, material science, engineering, and biosciences. We must double our student body through enrollment, of, uh, through enlightened enrollment management, recruitment and retention. We must enhance Tuskegee University's global footprint. <laughs> including study abroad, joint research, <laughs> faculty exchange, increased engagement in sustainable development initiatives, and distance learning. We must infuse cutting-edge technology on an interdisciplinary basis, including analytical instrumentation and non-destructive testing, high-performance computing, real-time satellite remote sensing. We must upgrade our physical facilities. Deferred maintenance is no longer a clinical term, it's a visual term. <laughs> we must plan for uh, the ongoing maintenance. We must dedicate ourselves to the sustainable economic and social development of our surrounding local and regional communities. <laughs> we must be vigilant in redefining and reinforcing student-centric policies. We must increasingly collaborate in research, instruction, and local, national, and global engagement initiatives with major universities, national research labs, corporations, and non-government organizations. We must warmly welcome our alumni. Establish an alumni house and community visitor information and engagement center. We must dramatically improve our athletic facilities. George Washington Carver once asserted, quote, where there is no vision, there is no hope. Given the ambitious yet accomplishable vision that we apparently collectively share for Tuskegee University's future globally recognized research preeminence, we have hope in abundance and we have great expectations. Thank you and God bless Tuskegee University.